Thank you.
Aloha and welcome everyone. Calvary Chapel Wednesday night on the, this Wednesday night, day before Thanksgiving. So much to be thankful for. First things first, let's pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, we thank you most of all for all you do for us in our lives, in our, in our days, in our nights. Tonight I ask, Lord, that you come in here and fill us afresh with your spirit. Guide us in your ways, not our ways. I ask that you be with uh, those that are traveling this week, those that are visiting, those that are just be with us, Lord. When you're with us, nothing can be against us. And I ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's continue to worship and give God thanks and praise. Lord, every moment of the hour, you are always welcome in our lives, God.
us, Lord God Almighty. You are the potter. We are the clay, Father. That just reminds us of the Thessalonians and Paul's ministry where him and his co-workers, Silas and Timothy, were there preaching the gospel. They were there only three Sabbaths. And how they these people were just on fire for the Lord. And, and we just need to keep continuing asking God to stir in ourselves uh, that work that he can do in our lives. We only have to let him in. He's such a good, good father. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing that I never It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am.
I heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Continue with our study. Let's pray. Father God, we do want to thank you again for this evening, Lord. We thank you for the marvelous worship we enjoyed, Lord, and we enjoy coming and gathering, Lord, to seek you first in your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord, just trusting that you're adding all things unto us, Lord. Help us to lay the things of the day down at the foot of your cross, Lord, and help us look towards you, Lord. And as we come acknowledging, Lord, even as we sang in that last song, you are perfect, in all of your ways, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for your perfection, Lord. We thank you for your glory, Lord, and we thank you for your love poured out for us in the form of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Father. We come with hearts filled with thanksgiving, or Lord, if uh, maybe there's a little bit room for more thanksgiving, Lord, we want to give more thanksgiving to you, Lord, that we might honor you, Lord, and worship you, Lord, with our every inch of our being, Lord, every inch of our mine our hearts lord our souls lord god and we thank you for this night lord we thank you for that you've done so much for us lord and we pray we might not never never forget lord and turn uh, to the right or to the left or to look at the the things of the world that the world offers lord and we thank you again for keeping us on track we thank you lord that we're here this night to worship you lord and to allow you to uh, minister before us we thank you, Father. We praise you. Lord, we do pray for those who couldn't be here. They might be working. They might be traveling. They might be out. A lot of guys have the colds and the sniffles, Lord, with the weather turning a little bit cool, a little bit wet, Father. And we do pray your touch for their lives, Lord, that you move and you minister richly on behalf of each one. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. We thank you for those even watching uh, online. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey guys, again, welcome. We're, we're going to just go through our First Kings 14 study tonight. And we're going to get right into the study this night. Just a couple of announcements, a couple of reminders. Keep the River of Life mission in prayer. And uh, they're really putting out a lot of plates of food. I know that Levon was there this uh, today helping with the, the feeding today and the preparation for the feeding tomorrow. But I think it's just a hubbub of activity, and they really put out hundreds of plates of great food out into the community, and it's all done in, with the love of Jesus Christ. So uh, we're thinking that uh, those who deliver are like these uh, angels bringing uh, plates filled with good food, but messages of love also, the opportunity to, to pray with people, the opportunity to give them a smile, a word of encouragement, whatever that might be. Also, the Stevedos for Christ will be having uh, will be having our annual holiday outreach on and brunch on the waterfront tomorrow morning uh, out in the community there, out on the waterfront area. So keep us in prayer. The thing has just grown over the year, just uh, has grown too exponentially too. So uh, it, it's quite a big, uh, not big production, but it's kind of a big blessing for the Lord, but a blessing for those who attend. And of course, for all those who participate, uh, I think we are blessed even more as we uh, as we gather to just point the people towards the Lord and give the glory to Him. But in First Kings chapter fourteen, guys, uh, you know uh, we we've been doing a series in the uh, Word of God that we kind of call in encounters with God, and we we kind of declare that hey, everybody has this encounter with God. You know, no matter who you are. Uh, where you are, you know, most of us have heard about Jesus. Most of us have heard about God. And most of us, you know, have wondered. And for many years, many of us may have just kind of held people at arm's length. Hey, it's good for you, you know, but, you know, I, I, I do my own thing. I think I got it under control. I think I got it under hand, uh, you know. And uh, until you come to that point where you say, hey, I need an encounter with God. I need something. 
more than what I have. And you know, here in the book of 1 Kings, we see this kind of a roll of events in the hearts and lives of people. And uh, we left off in 33 and 34 of chapter, um, uh, in chapter 13. would help if I, I, get, I can get there myself. We're in 34 and 34, uh, 32 and 30, 33, uh, 32 of chapter 12, guys. No, I'm still not there, guys. Chapter 13, verse 33. After this event, Jeroboam did not return from his evil way. A Jeroboam was the king of these ten, uh, ten tribes of uh, Judah called Israel. And, uh, 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 but he, again, he made his priests of the high places from among all the people. Any who, he, who would, he ordained to be priests of the high places. And this event became sin to the house of Jeroboam, even to blot out and to destroy it from the face of the earth. Here this guy, this king, led the people astray. He made his own form of worship. He ordained his own priests. These guys were not ordained of God, but ordained by man. And whoever wanted to serve, who wanted, whoever wanted to take a turn at the, uh, before the altar would come up. And uh, 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 we, we recall that the prophet of God, uh, in, in, uh, in the e earlier verses, guys, uh, in the chapter, there was a prophet of God that came uh, to Jeroboam and gave him a warning. Hey, these things are coming down. These things are going to happen. This, I'm coming in the name of the Lord to just warn you that you've got to change. And much, many, much like, like our own lives, guys, we may have had that opportunity where guys have said, hey, you can... Uh, you might see a guy in downtown Honolulu that, that's standing on a soapbox that says turn or burn, and you think that's what? It's kind of harsh. But it's actually true that yeah, unless we turn from our evil ways, hey, we might just end up you know, burning in hell like you know, we, we think uh, of hell is in some of the cartoons and stuff, but really hell is a, big, a real place. It's a place where there's separation. It's a place where there's eternal darkness. And it's a place that the Bible says that it's filled with eternal weeping and gnashing of teeth. So a lot of bad things is, are going on. But um, uh, this, this prophet, uh, uh, apparently, he was lied to by another old prophet. And he paid the price uh, uh, with his very life. Um, but, you know, here... Uh, Jeroboam, he must have been made aware of the prophet's demise and the judgment pronounced against himself and Israel. There were no rumors or, or repentance in his heart whatsoever, and he continued in his evil ways. In 34, we see that his hard heart would bring destruction. But here in chapter 14, we bring at that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise now, go and disguise yourself so that you might... Uh, they might not know that you are the wife of Jeroboam. And go to Shiloh, and behold, Abijah the prophet is there who spoke concerning me that I would be king over his people. Now take ten loaves with you and some cakes and a jar of honey and go to him, and he will tell you what will happen to the boy. Jeroboam and all his trickery guys would not even come close I uh, would not even come close with Ahijah the prophet, the man of God, using a disguise and putting his wife up to bring gifts and to try and coax out of Abijah a positive response on his son's illness. She, he was hoping that hey, the, the prophet would say, oh, don't worry, I, I got all these gifts and I'll say a prayer and I'll wave my magic wand and your son is going to be okay. But, you know, this was pretty serious that you think that, hey, um, the Lord is speaking this judgment to come over uh, Jeroboam's household. And it, it's going to strike down his, his son. In 4 and 5, we, we see that, And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose, and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. 
And Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. Now the Lord said to, Ahi, uh, said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire you concerning her son, for he is sick, and you shall say thus and thus to her. For it will be when she arrives, she will pretend to be another woman. Can you imagine that? And, you know, sometimes maybe moms are so desperate to do something good for their kids, they would lie, you know, they would, they would put on this pretense, they would put on this lie. And whether she was so desperate or whether she was really under the control of her husband, the king, that says, hey, you're going to go, you're going to do this, you're going to pre present these loaves of bread, this jar of honey, you're going to go disguise and make nice, nice. And though the old prophet was blind, you know, she, he probably said, hey, the guy's blind anyway, so, you know, he's not going to recognize you. But the Lord revealed to him that, uh, what was coming in the trickery and the deceit. And you know what, what the Bible does, it reveals a lot to us about hey, what lies in the heart of man. A lot of times, hey, we can get kind of trick, trickery. You know, you might, you might try and trick your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, you know, your co-worker, whatever it might be. But you're formed with this trickery and sometimes absolute deceit. I mean, what does it take for a person to come clean? Above all things, uh, he puts the child's mother uh, up to the con game. Hey, you, you have to go to, you're going to have to go, and you're going to have to put on this, this deceitful act before the man of God. And it came about when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet coming to the doorway. He said, come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another woman? For I am... For I am sent to you with a harsh message. It shocked her that when she entered the door, and he already knew that she was, he knew that she was coming. And he already announces that, yeah, I got this bad message for you. You filled with all this bad juju. And really what it is is sin, guys. You know, as we turn from sin, you know, we're filled with sin. But as we turn from sin, God is the one that washes us and cleanses us. And you know, even daily we might sin, even daily we might have some trickery in our heart or some deceitfulness in our mind, and we're going to come clean before God and say, hey, Lord, forgive us, because, you know, um, uh, 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 this is what happened. Well, I got mad at that guy, you know. Man, I really wanted to smash his car or whatever it might be. He was going so slow on the freeway or whatever it might be. You know, we get angry and we give in to that. And we're going to say, hey, hey, Lord, forgive me because, you know, I, I kind of blew it. And sometimes we're so careless, we don't even know we're sinning, but we just keep going, you know, in our thick-headedness until the Lord reveals it to us. You know, He reveals it to us. He speaks to our hearts. And He says, oh, I got to deal with that. You know, I got to deal with that. And uh, uh, But here, right away, she was busted. You know, what, what, what do you say? What can you say as the Lord you, has you dead to rights? I have this message for you. It's not good. And he says, Go to Jeroboam, and thus says, the, uh, uh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, because I exalted you from all the people and made you a leader over my people and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and g gave it to you. Yet you have not been like my, saved, uh, my servant David, who kept my commandments, who followed me with all his heart to do only what was right in my sight. You know, the Lord was kind of disappointed. He was a little um, hurt, maybe. He says, hey, Jeroboam, I did all this for you. And yet, you, you know, you rejected all the things that I've uh, kind of given you, a little bit of direction, a little bit of uh, instruction, a little bit of inspiration, that you might be uh, doing good things for the house of Israel, that you might be a good leader for the people. And what God is wanting to do in our hearts and lives is, you know, he wants us to make a difference in the world. He wants us to make a difference to our, our loved ones, our family members, those who are closest to us. He wants us to be those good witnesses, those good examples, and not out and out blatant fools, like, you know, hey, we, we're not trusting God, we forget God. You know, and, uh, you know, rather than getting, uh, you know, ra rather than going off and getting angry or whatever it might be, you might just say, oh, I give up, Lord, I surrender. <laughs> Your Holy Spirit has to work in this situation or in that person or whatever it, that might be. Because, you know, I can't, I, I can't do it on my own. 
The message was, I've often uh, done, I've done all of this for you, yet you fail to do what is right. And God is not calling us to do anything really extraordinary beyond our measure. But he does call us to this place that hey, we know we, between what is right and wrong. And some guys continue to just uh, live in that light or that vein that hey, I'm going to do wrong. I'm going to go home. Yeah, I love the Lord, but man, I cannot help it. I got to stop by. I got to get that 12 pack or that 18 pack on the way home. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was in the, the, the grocery stores. I couldn't believe the amount of alcohol I saw going out the door. I said, wow, some Thanksgiving. The guy has that whole cart. It wasn't a shopping wagon. It was a flatbed. Like, and it was loaded with these green bottles, and it wasn't 7-Up or Sprite. See? So I was thinking, hey, you kind of owe that, partner. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I bite my tongue because he said, just say, hey. Uh, you know, that, that's how they give thanks. They, they bow down before their idol. You know, tomorrow I'm going to be speaking out of Judges. And one of the things the Lord said to um, Gideon, he says, go to your father's house and tear those idols down. And those idols might be like that green bottle of booze. That idol might be the green bottle of pride. The idol might be the, the thought that, hey, I know better than that guy. That guy is he's kind of sappy, you know. <laughs> And, you know, uh, I know better than that. I got this pride. I got this self-worth. I, I can do it, you know, on my own. And all the things that hold us back from coming to God and say, Hey, God, hey, I'd like to have a relationship with you. I need you. You know, I, I admit that I've fallen short of your glory. But you've made these idols to worship and to provoke me. And the Lord says, Hey, tear those idols down, he told Gideon. But in verse 10, he says, Therefore, behold, I am bringing calamity on the house of Jeroboam, and cut, will cut off Jeroboam from every male person, both bond and free in Israel. I will make a clean sweep in the house of Jeroboam, as one sweeps away dung until it's all gone. Yeah, that sounds pretty horrible, yeah? I've done all this, and I'm bringing calamity or disaster to you and your household. And you think that, you know, you get angry about guys, they don't clean up their dogs, mess on the sidewalk and stuff like that. But he says, hey, your household is going to be swept clean. All the opala, all the dung is all going to be swept out, you included. And he says, if anyone belongs to, anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs will eat. Hey, worse yet, you're going to not only be swept out, but the dogs are going to eat you. Whoever dies in the field, the birds of the heavens will eat, for the Lord has spoken. Man, listen to this. All, all the dogs is going to consume you. And uh, what, a, what a horrible demise. And I think that, you know, um, like with the nation of Israel, God has been so patient, guys. When we go through this book of Kings and the chronicles of the kings and all that, what we're going to see is a series of kings in the northern kingdom of Israel, a serial series of kings in the southern kingdom of Judah. And, you know, they're, they're the, the 12 tribes are split up between these two, uh, two uh, fa factions. And, uh, you know, you're going to see that most of the kings were bad kings. And, you know, Israel is just a small little dot on the scheme of where man is in the world. Because man has come, man has brought leaders, man has brought people to come and share the word. And man has brought time and time, uh, the Lord has brought time and time again to man the good news of God, the good news of Jesus Christ, to set his path straight, to be a light unto his path. You know, thy word is a lamp unto his path, a light unto his word. And you know, if we ignore him, hey, we can ignore him, we can go our way. He, he's a gentleman. He, uh, he lets us go. Sometimes we get it so close, he might stand at the door of our heart and knock. And he says, if any man hears me and opens up to me, I'll come in uh, to him, and I'll, have, uh, I'll sup with him. I'll have communion with him. I'll have fellowship. We'll kind of hang out and talk story, you know, like, like we're going to do on Sunday. We're going to have uh, a potluck after church on Sunday so we can just hang out and talk story until they start flashing the lights on, off and on. Yay, time to go on that. <laughs> Sometimes these guys don't want to go. But, you know, that's, that's how sweet the fellowship is in the Lord. 
And this is what we enjoy. And you know, sometimes we think that hey, we had so much fun in the world. <laughs> one, uh, this one couple were, they were walking out with us uh, uh, of our condo today. And they said, oh, where are you going? Starting off the Thanksgiving early. They say, we're going to such and such a place. And I said, oh, fancy. Yeah. They said, oh yeah, I get good music. So, so right away we put two and two together with the, with the good music. They're, they're probably hoisting a few too. Yeah. <laughs> and they're the nicest couple. But you know, they, they just, they're just out there. You know. She said, oh, I, I babysit my grandkids and he does, uh, he's a landscaper. We work hard, so we play hard. She didn't say play hard, but you know, they enjoy it. You know. They go out and, uh, uh, you know, all power to them. But, you know, they know where we're going, you know. And, you know, I've often uh, talked to guys, and guys say, hey, I need, uh, you know, you prayed for my right arm before. I said, hey, the, 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 the thing's still so, but can you pray for my left arm now? I said, yeah, but he said, pray for my left arm and for, for I, that I hit the lottery. He told me this one. And I said, hey, you got to get him back on me first. But he's such a clown because I know that other Christians have come into his life and have spoken the gospel message to him. And, uh, and now all he can do is clown around about it, joke about it. But deep down inside, I know the, the high hound of heaven is chasing after him. And I told his girlfriend, I said, why do you stay with this guy? <laughs> And he goes, and because I'm so tall, and he's about five foot nothing, not a guy. <laughs> well, at least handsome, I said, yo. <laughs> but you know, the, 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 the world is, you know, just kind of working itself away from God. And we, we don't want to be in that place where the world consumes us. You know, like those dogs. That's the world, the flesh, the devil, just consuming people up, just chewing people up. And, uh, and spitting them out, you know. That's what the world does. <clears throat> and, uh, in 12, now arise and go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child will die. And Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he alone of Jeroboam's family shall come to the grave, because in him was something good was found toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. What a sentence pronounced over Jeroboam's family. Are you going to come home? And you know, as soon as you come home, your child is going to die. And that's the greatest tragedy any parent or any grandparent or any uncle or any loving person. You know, I know our neighbors, they're a young couple. They, they said that, oh, pretty soon it's going to be noisy because they have a kid coming. So Levan goes, oh, no, no problem, no worry, you know. And uh, uh, you, you think that, hey, that's a lot of joy, but no family would want to hear some kind of death sentence like that. And yet... Uh, 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 but he says in 14, he says, Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam this day and from now on. For the Lord will strike Israel as a reed shaken on the water, and he will uh, uproot Israel from the, gro the good uh, the good land which he gave to the fathers and scattered them beyond the Euphrates River because they have made the ashram provoking the Lord to anger. You know, in 13, um, uh, it mentions that uh, there was something good found toward the Lord in that heart of that little child. And you know, when you think about it, every time I drive past um, uh, Right before the police department on Baratania Street, there's, I guess that, that's Planned Parenthood still. I'm not quite sure. But I know that, you know, there are always peaceful guys out there kind of protesting the thing of abortion and stuff like that. And when you think about it, we, we aborted 60 million babies in the period of time of this Roe versus Wade and all this and that. You know, we legalized abortion. And when you think about all those innocent kids, I think about this little child that died. And I think that God sees them in all the innocence and all the purity and uh, all of that, that that goes on. And, you know, if, if there's some who are listening who may have had an abortion or may have been a part, part of an abortion, you know, I don't, want, I don't say this to condemn you, but I'm saying that God is gracious that he welcomed that child 
into heaven, into his arms. And you know, we, you know, guys used to joke about that. They said that, oh, we have this fund that if, you know, anybody, um, you know, uh, if anybody needs it, we have money put aside to do this procedure to get rid of the kid, you know. And I, I thought that, hey, we were so cruel and so crass as kids, even though we were kids, you know, we had the audacity to joke about something so heinous as taking a life. It was, it was like nothing. Hey, we just pitch in a few bucks and we have this kitty for each other. But, you know, here he went on in 14 and 15, he says that the Lord will raise up a righteous king and the Lord will strike Israel. You know, it, it's an amazing thing that after so many centuries, Israel is again a nation. Isn't it amazing that after so many, a uh, couple thousand years, Israel is back in their land? Isn't it amazing that, that after uh, so many years and years and years, the same battle rages on within Israel? The same things go on. The same thing happens. The same things we talk about in the Gaza Strip from centuries ago is still going on, you know, today. The same enemies, oh, their names may have changed, but their faces are the same. Their, their, uh, their desire and their uh, motives are the same to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. And you know what? Israel hasn't said that hey, we want to push these Palestinians into the ocean and see them all die. But we, we know that Iran has said that continually they want to see the, the demise of Israel. They want to just wipe Israel out and push them into the sea and see them all drown. You know? And uh, this, is the, this is the action of the enemy, guys. And you know, this is the, the thing that's going on in this world. We think that the world is a pretty good place and oh, hey, we all gave to the line of wildfire. We gave for this, we gave for that. We praying for them, we praying for that. But we, we see that, you know, I used to think that hey, basically people are good inside, but you know, I really come to the conclusion that pe people without the Lord are basically, you know, wicked like this Jeroboam. Hey, go lie. Go by trickery and deceit or whatever it takes to get it our way. Hey, we gotta make this deal go. <laughs> we gotta get this deal done, whatever it might, might be. You know, but uh, the Lord will raise up a righteous king. And uh, he says that they have made their wooden symbols of deity, these, uh, these ashram. And these ashram, I, I spoke about it, they like the totem poles, they like the the tikis and all this and that. And, and people really are uh, bowing down before those gods. And, you know, I, I told this, this to you before, but, you know, I've, I've seen some guys, they kind of look like the god, you know, the god that their families worship, you know, many, for many hundreds of years. But uh, these are the things that they said, they turn from this thing. Uh, And he gave up Israel on the account of the sins of Jeroboam. He committed with, and he made uh, Israel sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tizra. She was entering the throne of the house, the threshold of the house, and the child died. Uh, the sad thing for mother, the death of her child. Uh, for the life, the, for the child, he was ushered right in, or she was ushered in, uh, ushered right into heaven, into the arms of God, I believe, and. Uh, uh, th that's that. And uh, Israel buried him and mourned for him. And according to the w word of the Lord, which he spoke to his servant Ahijah the prophet, the rest of the acts of, uh, of Jeroboam, how he made war, how he reigned, and behold, are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. And at that time, Jeroboam reigned. He was 22 years old when he slept with his, uh, slept with his fathers. And Nadab, his son, reigned in his place. Today I heard uh, one, on one of the radio, one of the guys was teaching that he says that if you've reached the age of 70, 70, and you haven't accepted the Lord, he said that the chances of you accepting the Lord is one in one million. And I can believe that because he said that the, the, the longer you go, the more you say no to God, the easier it is to say no to God, the easier it is 
to harden your heart or your heart your heart just hardens by itself the more you say no by the time you hit age 70 hey, the chances are very slim and nil one in a million and, and you know I thought that's a sad statistic but you know that's how it is but God is so gracious that he would give people all the opportunity to turn uh, from their evil ways. You know, we, we, we see it, and I hear that song uh, from Santana. You got to turn from your evil ways, baby. <laughs> and, you know, the guy on Fort Street say, turning, say turn or burn, you know. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of truth to it. In all the innocence of a child, guys, uh, the, there was good, uh, no overt sin dwelt in that, that baby or whatever, the child's heart, no deceit, no willful acts against God, no thoughts of murder, no lust, you know, no thoughts of adultery, only a pure heart, you know, you think about that, that's born in a child. But, you know, as, as they grow, they kind of get filled with sin pretty quick, you know. They learn the word no and everything else, and, they, you know, they start beating up on each other and beating up on the parents. But now Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he became king. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, in the, the city which the Lord had chosen from all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah and, and Ammonitus. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy more than all their fathers had done with their sins which they had committed. For they built themselves high places and sacred pillars and ashram on every high hill and beneath every luxuriant tree. And there they also made male cult prostitutes in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord dispos uh, dispossessed before the sons of Israel. Rehoboam was not much different. He had the blessings of having his father Solomon, his grandfather David. They were both men of God. But it, was, it, uh, it seemed to be of no avail that it didn't just catch. It doesn't just ca catch you on. It doesn't, you're not a Christian because your, your grandfather or your grandmother was praying for you. You're not a Christian because you grew up in the Christian family. You're not a Christian because you were baptized as a baby and, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. But you're, you know, you're, uh, uh, it, do it doesn't come like that automatically. You're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to voli volitionally say that, hey, Lord, I want you as my Lord and Savior. I need you. I come admitting my sin. I come believing in you. I come committing my life to you, you know, and to follow you all the days of my life. Uh, it, it seemed to be of no avail. He went the way of the world. Uh, it's horrible, if not worse, than Jeroboam because hey, he had all this good background. I had all this good stuff. And you see all our good kids, a lot of the kids, they grow up, we send them to Christian school, we send them to Christian colleges, they come out atheists, they graduate atheists. <laughs> I have no belief in God. The guy, the, 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 the professors taught, taught me everything else about than God. They said that God's dead. But, uh, uh, guys, you know, this is, this is the kind of sad demise of the nation of Israel and uh, Judah and Israel. But it's the sad demise of where our world is in this continual cycle. You know, you, you have revivals, little spots of bright lights, and you have great men of God come out like Billy Graham, and you have great preachers of renown beforehand, and you have all these great writers that wrote all the great hymns, and you, you know, as you write the hymns, you just want to weep because you think of the story and the the testimony behind the, uh, the, the hymn is so powerful, you know, amazing grace. You know, how, uh, how, how God's amazing grace is so great towards us. Even though I was a horrible sinner, I was a horrible, horrible person, God saved us. And, you know, this is where the Lord has us. This is where he reminds us that we stay on course, we stay on target. We live our lives that we might be those, um, uh, those living testimonies known and read by all men. You know, I used to tell that to the stevedores all the time. Hey, you're the closest thing to a Bible that these guys, plenty of people might see and read. You're a living testimony. 
known and read by all men. And you know, um, I, I'm so glad I invited one of the guys from uh, the pier, the harbor I was working with uh, this morning. And I say, hey, we're having our outreach on the waterfront tomorrow morning. You're welcome to come. The guys would love to see you. You know, and he said, oh, well, well, if I can, you know, get my son up, maybe we'll come down. I said, yeah, the guys would love to see you. He was a regular at our study. He was a regular with the, the fellowship of believers among the waterfront. And uh, somehow you, you, you kind of, the hardness of this world, you know, bad breakups, bad relationships, hard times with the kids, you know, kind of just separate people off and they just stay off and... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I hope and pray that he'll come. But why don't we pray? Father God, we do want to thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you for your loving kindness and your, your goodness, Lord, and your mercy that you showered upon us time and time again for many, many years, Lord. Uh, you've reached out in the love of God to us, Lord, and uh, you continue to reach out to a world lost and dying. Father, un unfortunately, uh, a great majority of the world deny you. A great majority of the world bow before other gods, Lord. And uh, we pray, Father, that we might be as those that would continue to seek the true and the living God. Father, continue to help us go in that light and in that vein and to receive you just really in the quietness of our own hearts, right here where we stand, where we sit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I'll stand for this last worship. Amen. 
Have a blessed Thanksgiving. We'll be here afterwards for fellowship. Blessings.